Today we're going to be cleaning and servicing brake drums on a 2007 Saturn View. Any vehicle with brake drums you can follow, it'll be very similar. The first thing we're going to do is jack up the vehicle, jack it up at the back on both sides so both rear wheels are off the floor. Now the car's jacked up and placed on jack stands, we're going to take off the parking brake, otherwise we won't be able to remove the drums because the brake shoes will be holding it on. So why service these anyway? Why even bother? Well, for a start, it's a sealed system. So what happens is brake dust can gather up in there and there's no way for it to escape. So we want to try and clean all that out. Uh, this comes from just wearing down the brake shoes over time. The dust kind of falls and it can get in the other components and cause potential problems. Another one is to check for the shoe wear. You can't really have a visual sign like caliper brakes where you can look at the pads and see how much have been used, especially if you buy a used car. The only really telltale uh, sign is a noise or squealing or something, and that's usually when things have gone too far. So it's a good idea just to have a look, really. Another thing is check for damage of components, uh, maybe your handbrake or you know parking brake's not working properly, just to make sure things are working. And also you can adjust uh, the self-adjuster. Again, the self-adjuster is self-adjusting in uh, most cars. Uh, it's usually activated by using the parking brake or driving in reverse, say, 20 miles an hour and applying the brake really hard. This will make the self-adjuster work. And when the self-adjuster automatically adjusts, the shoes slowly come out. That's how they work, really. So it's just to check that's working correctly and everything else. So. Okay, with the parking brake disengaged and the wheel off, we can just move the drum from side to side to take it off the vehicle, like so. If you can't get the drum off, one or two things has happened. Your brakes are seized or your handbrake's on and the shoes are contacting the drum so it won't come off. Alternatively, this silver part here is seized on behind it. So what you do here, you just take a socket, like so, and hit the top of this with a hammer. We use a socket because we don't want to accidentally hit these studs. Don't hit around the drum because this can crack and cause problems. So only hit around this area if it's seized on here. One thing I should mention as well when taking the drum off, never use any lubricant around the brakes uh, for uh, hopefully obvious reasons. <laughs> so that means WD-40, PB Blaster, anything like that. You usually know if someone's been in these drums before because there's little clips around here from the factory. So when the car's on the assembly line, the drums don't fall off. Uh, that's a good indication no one's been in here before. You can discard of those, they're no longer needed. So before you do any cleaning, uh, brake dust, very bad for your lungs. Always wear a mask when dealing with this. So you can see in my drum here, I've got a little brake dust here. We're going to clean that out. And also we're going to clean all these components with brake clean. So when cleaning this whole area inside the drum, brake cleaner is brake cleaner. Don't use anything crazy like WT-40. Make sure it's actually proper brake cleaner there. And you can spray that whole area down. Again, make sure you wear a mask when doing this. So it looks a bit daunting, especially if you're going to replace these shoes, there's quite a lot of components involved, but we'll go over them one by one real quick. So this part here is the wheel cylinder right here. So here's your brake fluid line here, it comes from the engine bay, through here, in the back of here, into the cylinder. Now the brake fluid here pushes or well, the cylinder uses the fluid and pushes out these brake shoes here, which come in contact with the drum and that's how the car slows down. So that's the job of the wheel cylinder. Now the piece hiding under here, with these little spikes on there, that's called the self-adjuster. We covered it uh, very briefly, but what that does is the shoes wear. It self-adjusts by rotating uh, this little cog here. You can see there's threads there, and that slowly comes out as we wear our shoes. Now as this adjusts, it pushes the shoes out over time, automatically. And as these wear, it comes out, both shoes and contacts with the drum as normal. Kind of like how caliper brakes do, but this needs a cylinder and a self-adjuster in order to do that. Now these self-adjusters, uh, the little cog here has teeth kind of going almost one direction. 
So with the flathead screwdriver you can actually adjust it manually with a screwdriver by moving it one way or the other. So if you look at the threads in here, they're kind of going this direction here. So if we move the wheel downwards, we know because of the threads look like they're in that direction, moving the wheel downwards will cause our shoes to move outwards. Uh, moving the wheel backwards that way will cause our shoes to retract. Now again we can do this with a flathead screwdriver. You, you pretty much just put it on the wheel and move it downwards. Just like that. That's how we adjust them. Again the car should do this by itself but there are times when things get seized and you need to kind of clean it up, free it up, um, set it and then if everything's working right it should be able to do it itself. If you're installing brand new shoes it might come with a self-adjuster kit you might want to replace that so it's something you will need to know for when putting new components in. You will usually need to manually adjust them just to set it up and get everything uh, right before driving and putting the drum back on with the new components. Now one last thing behind the self-adjuster you see that small hole there? Well that's just a service hole for the self-adjuster so you can see my finger there you can actually access this without taking the drum off at all and maybe not even the wheel if it's on a lift and that allows you to adjust the adjuster while the drum's on again if the brakes are seized say these shoes are seized to the drum then you use the self-adjuster to back them off contract them so you can take the drum off so that's why we have a service port there Again, if you set this up incorrectly and it's on too tight, you put the drum on, it might not come back off. You can use the uh, little service port hole to loosen this adjuster and take the drum off. One other thing I should mention when adjusting this manually, um, you can see the teeth are in one direction here and they're kind of stopped by this toggle switch here, which in turn is connected to the shoes. So if you want to back this off, you actually need two screwdrivers coming in the service port. The first screwdriver will move this out the way uh, by just pushing on this, like so. And then the other screwdriver will rotate the wheel. You can't push the wheel in the other direction just because of the teeth are pointing in one way. So again, backing them off requires two screwdrivers, like so. The first one will do that, the second will move the wheel. And the last thing I mentioned is the handbrake lever here. So when the parking brake is applied, this will sort of pull out, it's connected by a spring mechanism that contacts the other shoe and when we apply the brake we can see the uh, shoes move out and in. I'll show you that right now. So it's good to have someone move up and down on the parking brake just so you can see this mechanism is working perfectly. So the wheel cylinders, we can actually get a flathead screwdriver and just pry off the rubber end right here and we can check for leaking, that's usually how we check to see if these cylinders are working correctly. So just by looking in the rubber end here or swabbing in there, you might see some brake fluid in which you'll definitely need to replace this component here, but really it looks perfectly dry. Check the other side as well and if that's dry, I'd say the cylinder works great. So on the side here we have our two brake shoes, one here and one here. This is the level of sort of braking power we have left, well, about a centimetre, um, so they look pretty good. Again when they go down to bare metal that's probably when you hear the problems, so this is why it's a good idea to check and it's really easy to do so. Uh, but for here the pads on here look great, uh, I wouldn't worry about changing them right now. So one thing I'm going to talk about real quick is uh, brake grease or brake lube. What is that? What's it do? Well, what it does, it just prevents the loud squealing noise you hear when you apply the brakes. That's really all it does. Um, what people tend to grease is these pins here where it kind of comes into the shoe and where the shoe touches the backing plate, um, usually up here, around here and at the bottom on both sides. People use anti-seize. Do not use anti-seize. It is the wrong component for this. Use a proper brake lube. They really, they cost the same, uh, you know, if not a, a little less. <laughs> so don't use anti-seize. Look it up. Lots of evidence out there and it actually can cause a few problems um, uh, even with ABS uh, components. So don't use anti-seize in your brake drums. Use proper brake lube. 
And again, it's optional. If you don't have a squeal, maybe you don't need to use it really. But if you have an annoying kind of squeak when you break, that's usually what it's used for. Here's a better look at where brake squeal comes from. You can see here like, on the backing plate. I was just making another video on changing this wheel bearing assembly and I took off some of these brake components uh, just to get better access there. And uh, you can see here they all are off the car. Sometimes if your springs are this rusty you may need to replace them because uh, they're only being held in by this small little flange in there by these rusty sort of pins so, <laughs> so it's a good way to you know uh, check and have a good look at some of your components is like the handbrake component here and under here there's just another spring that links the shoes together but really there's not much more to it so we all look quite good in there it's nice and clean now we've talked about the components we're putting our brake drum back on now when we do this we want to make sure that the brake shoes have sort of like a little drag but not much. So obviously the handbrake off now and rotate the drum. It should have a little drag but not kind of go crazy loose and not be super tight. Again if it's super tight you'll probably struggle getting the drum back on in general. If it's too tight and you can't get it off, again we talked about the service port, you can back off the self adjuster to get this drum back off. But when you put it on it should have a little drag but not too much. So that's really all there is to it. Um, before I go, I want to share a quick tip. When you're replacing these brake shoes here and you have it all apart, take the other side off as a reference. Take the wheel off, the drum off, but leave it there. So when you're replacing all these springs and components, it's really hard to keep track of where you are with all these things. Again, there's springs under here, a couple here. It is quite confusing to anyone, really. So work on one side at a time and go around the other car and use it as a reference. So it is good to put jack stands on both sides so both wheels are up and off and check each side as you're working. Again, that's when replacing the shoes and springs and things, it gets a bit confusing. So that's about it. I hope you've learned something and uh, thanks for watching.